We want to thank you for joining us at Cowboy Junction Church today. As you hear this message, we pray that your faith will grow and you will be both encouraged and challenged. We would really love it too if you would subscribe, rate, review, and share this online. You can also help us reach others by partnering with us financially. You can easily give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift at cowboyjunctionchurch.com slash give. We hope you enjoy the message today. So I've been looking forward to you guys getting here today because the last several services that we have had, it's been very interesting, the topic that we're covering tonight. I'm going to treat this as a coffee table conversation with you guys because as a pastor, sometimes I get in the rhythm of preaching so much, I miss the conversations of of just getting to talk to people about Jesus instead of uh, preaching about Jesus. And and the reason why it's such a big deal, I'm going to open this up with with the question that I opened the last three services with, and I want you to think about your knee-jerk reaction to the question that I have. Are you ready? How important is your citizenship? There's not a trick question. Uh, I mean, seriously, um, your answer may be, I don't know. Uh, yesterday we had some people actually shout in that, in that moment. They're like, it's awesome. Literally, the people got excited. Um, the third service was really interesting. Uh, and the reason why is because if you want to bring up a major topic today that may cause a lot of pushback and a lot of, um, uh, I guess, misinterpretation, is citizenship in the world today. And if you ask somebody, what is your citizenship? Or do you value your citizenship? Um, it's amazing, the third service, and the third service at Cowboy Junction, we have, a, 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 I guess, a, a generally large Hispanic population. And they'll tell you, uh, they were not born in the United States. They were born in Mexico. And they came here. And so there's a little nervousness. And I'll, I'll tell you a story here in a minute about why this subject is so... <laughs> A little, it, it, would, would you be intimidated to talk about citizenship at church? But that's what we're going to talk about today because it's 4th of July weekend. And, and yet, yesterday, I just began to talk, and it was amazing, the Hispanic crowd that were just behind it. And when you asked them, how's your citizenship? And they were amening because this was something they prayed for. Their family at one time was believing God that they could become American citizens. And it never dawned on me. I, I just kind of just thought, well, I, I don't know their reaction. And it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. What was very interesting is I did not know that this was the week that the band was going to start implementing more Hispanic uh, verses in some of the songs. And I thought, how incredible. How incredible that this, it, I believe that Cowboy Junction and stepping into a whole new world of, of, of I guess, the, the communities within the communities. And, and so let me go back to my question. What, what, do you ever think about your citizenship? Do you ever think about it? And the reason why this is such a big deal, because it is 4th of July weekend, and I want to throw a little curveball today, because we've been so on reading your Bible for all it's worth. The curveball today is to get you thinking about something that you may not realize is one of the greatest blessings God has given you. And for everybody in the room, like, well, back it up scripturally. Well, I'm about to. If you bring your Bible to church, it would help my preaching a whole lot. And if you're writing this down, I want you to write down something you can look at later or look at right now. It's in Acts chapter 22. Now, in a minute, we're going to put verse 25 up on the screen. But if anybody ever came and said, show me where the Bible would say anything about citizenship. It's one of the really cool stories in the story of Paul. Okay, his citizenship was a major part of a big moment in his life, and you're about to see. Uh, let me give you the backstory on this. Paul is preaching in Jerusalem. Okay, Paul's mission is to tell as many people as he can about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus has transformed his life so much so it's changed his name from from Saul to Paul. Okay. Paul is on this missionary journey, and he is telling everyone about the Messiah, how Old Testament proves that Jesus was the Messiah, that he died, was buried, rose again, and that we now have life everlasting by believing in Christ Jesus. And Paul, in this very moment, goes to Jerusalem, goes into the temple, 
and, and it begins to share the gospel, which means the good news to the people in the temple. Okay, let me, let me show you. I'm going to start reading verse 22. Verse 25 is going to pop up on the screen. It says, the crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Okay, they liked everything he had to say, thought he was intelligent. They liked how he approached what he was saying until he brought up Jesus and him being the Messiah. And then he said this. Then they raised their voice and shouted, rid the earth of him. He's not fit to live. The things escalated quickly. Usually you get thrown out. Usually they yell at you. They holler. It's just a bunch of threats. But now all of a sudden it's kill him. The earth is better without him. We don't have to hear the message about Jesus anymore. Okay, keep going here. And as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the commander ordered that Paul be taken to the barracks. Let me give you a backstory on this. This isn't a temple guard. This is a Roman commander over a Roman garrison over the troops that are now trying to figure out where did this riot come from. And so you see these Roman soldiers arrest Paul, and it goes on, it says, he directed that he be flogged and interrogated in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like this. So the answers that the Roman soldiers have is, let's just beat the crud out of him, which is what flogging is, until he tells us why everybody doesn't like him so much. Okay? Now let's go to verse 25. As they stretched him out to flog him, get this middle picture, they chain his feet up, they train, chain his hands up, and then they start pulling on the rope, and they're stretching him out so that there's no obstruction, so that they can get a great shot at him to flog him properly, and as they're stretching him out, it says this, Paul said to the centurion, stay in there, is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? What? Okay. When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do? He asked. This man is a Roman citizen. And the commander went to Paul and asked, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am, he answered. Then the commander said, I had to pay a lot of money to get my citizenship, but I was born a citizen, Paul replied. Ooh. Those who were about to interrogate him withdrew immediately. Now, this is the flogging party, okay? And now all of, this, of a sudden, things begin to shift. And I really want you to get this middle picture. I want to take you deeper into Scripture. I want to show you that there's answers in Scripture. And the people that were angry at him are now all of a sudden retreating. And now everybody who is holding the whip is now passing the whip to somebody else. This is a completely shift of a situation that was going downhill quickly. All because of a citizenship that we get to know Paul a little bit better and his story and just how important a citizenship is. It says this, those who are about to interrogate him withdrew immediately and the commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in change. Um, as American citizens, this isn't a message I get to preach very often, but as American citizens, you have rights. Yeah. And let me just say, for every young person in here, for, for you and for you guys and for everybody else out there that I can't see because it looks like a pretty old crowd tonight, the fact is, y'all got to realize y'all have rights too. You really do. And, and the funny thing is, is that the older you get, the more you value them, but the younger you are, especially in today's generations, you don't realize the price that's been paid for you to have what's called religious freedoms, okay? And, and you, would, you would kind of think for a minute, well, what could ever happen to me? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. The fact is, is that there are, there may, there's not religious freedoms everywhere you go. In fact, the very reason that our forefathers left England is because there was one church and one church only in England. It's called the Church of England. You had to 
Do exactly what the Church of England told you to do. Your sermon notes had to go through the Church of England. They told you what to preach on. They told you what to say. And all of our forefathers, which were English, okay, they came from England. They, this, this is all, I'm just processing, just go with me here, okay. They came on one of the very first things. In fact, the first thing they said about your freedoms, they considered your religious freedom to be your first freedom before carrying arms, before freedom of speech. And freedom of speech was, was kind of connected to the first freedom being the freedom of religion. All of the freedoms you have, the freedom to vote, the freedom to uh, have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, all of those come after the first freedom to worship God however you want to worship God. Now, over the years, that is one thing that has gotten, that has got America in trouble because now it welcomes all religions. But as a pastor, I want you to know, what it actually does is a very positive thing. It opens the doors for me to allow others who don't know my God to see how great my God is and compare your God to my God and, 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 and in a loose kind of way, may the greater God win. And, and let me put it in today's terminology. Would the, would the real God please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. See, it's an old crowd. Nobody got that joke, okay? <laughs> so so it's, this, it's this moment that as Christians, we don't know what to do with the whole freedom of religion. However, as Christians in this room, let's stop and pause and think about something. How important is your citizenship with the areas of freedom of religion? And we don't talk about this very often at Cowboy Junction, and I'm glad we are. Because if anybody in this room feels like God is leading you to do something that seems a little scary and it seems a little awkward and you wonder what the world is going to think of it and you wonder if it's going to make you lose friends or gain friends. It's just all the things that can go through your mind. Let me relieve one of the things with a value that you have that not a lot of people have in this world. You have the freedom of religion and that should give you a little bit of comfort to know that those who came before you gave you the right to do what it is God is calling you to do in today's day and age. Whether it's high school, whether it's college, whether it's your work, whether it's your truck, whether it's your dorm, whether it's your retirement center, wherever it might be, you have a thumbs up from your country to say... I think you should follow through with what God's put in your heart to do. And I think if you believe that that's God's truth, you should stand for God's truth. And you should do this because this is what makes America great. Uh, let me tell you something that may shock you a little bit. Uh, first thing that may shock you is um, <clears throat> your pastor has at times had to go to lawyers to help us proclaim the, proclaim the gospel in this very nation that we live in. And, and that's kind of, uh, it's kind of awkward because we're in the Bible Belt. I mean, honestly, uh, can you think of a more awful thing than in this country, in this part of the world, you can't share the gospel? Um, there are friends of mine who their states right now are trying to uh, get their notes turned into the government before they can preach them. They have to turn their notes in to the government. They have to go through it, and they can only preach what the government wants them to preach. That's some of my friends in other states. But for us, um, let, me, let me tell you one story. Before Heather and I got married, and Connie's here today, I might have shared this story before, but you would think because of this crowd, cowboy church services would be a wonderful thing. But we, I, I, was, I was, this was before Heather and and. and I was going to do church service at college national finals with Ted Weesey and Paul and Susie Luxinger. And all of a sudden, one out of the blue, we got news that they were canceling Cowboy Church Service at the CNFR. And the reason was because the president of the CNFR said that he did not want church service at his rodeo and he did not think God belonged at rodeos, period. And we were at an awful position because we had no leverage. We were just a bunch of pastors. We, we, we investigated. We looked, why can't you change your mind? 
So we contacted a Christian lawyer, which surprisingly, that may be the second thing that surprises you the most today, that there are actually Christian lawyers, okay? And is it, you remember a man by the name of Jay Seculo? Yeah. Jay Seculo? Famous, famous Christian lawyer who stood for these kind of cases, and a phone call was made. Jay, what do we do? And Jay says, it's easy. All you got to do is find one student. Find one contestant who will stand up and say, I want church service at the College National Finals Rodeo. Now, kids are coming from all over the nation, and we just need one. And surprisingly, it was difficult to find one kid. It was. It was hard to find one kid, except for one kid who happened to live in Lee County, New Mexico, and happened to live on the very property you're on right now, who actually grew up in the house that my kids are growing up in right now, and his name was Josh Crow. Josh Crow. And Josh and Casey Crow lived in this house, and they went to WT, and Josh said, I want church at the College National Finals, and Connie was there, and Jim was there, and it was one of the most beautiful things. Jay, Jay, Jay Seculo said, all you need is one kid. And when we found out that Josh would say, put his name, sign his name, Jay represented us, and now the College National Finals had to have church service there. We were respectful, we were kind, but we held our ground. And that, that weekend service, it was the last Sunday of the CNFR, 400 people, uh, contestants and families, showed up, and it was unbelievable as everyone rallied, but it never could have happened if we didn't have that one person stand up and say, it's important to me. And that's why I ask you, what is important to you? Have you ever thought about if you lost the freedom to? Have you ever thought about if you didn't get to? Uh, what if? You ever just think about the what ifs? And, and the real question isn't how are we going to lose our freedom? The real question is this. Are you standing in the freedoms you have, right. and can your faith be seen? Because right. most of us will never know tribulation, not because we live in a great world, but, but we, 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 we don't have, we're, we're not going to experience tribulation all because our faith isn't seen anywhere we go. Oh, that'll preach. Man, it got quiet right there. You've got to have an active faith for the enemy to get mad at you. You've got to have an outgoing faith for the world to hate you. Now, you didn't think about that, but let me say, I've been kind, I've been sweet, I've done everything right, but the moment I brought Jesus up in some situations, it turned sour quick. And so I had to sit and realize for a moment, do I bow back because I've been nice, I've been kind, you guys know me, I'm not going to be rude, but you can't hide truth. And in a stupid world, doesn't it need more truth? Yeah. Come on, let's think about this. But I may lose friends. And, and people may hate me. But when they curse me in this world, they're going to celebrate me in heaven. Right. And at some point, you've got to grow some guts. I said guts. Yeah. And you've got to grow some guts and realize, what does faith look like? It's courageous. Right. It's bold. It's strong. Let me show you guys something real quick. Uh, there was a man by the name of Oscar Rodriguez who served in the United States military for 33 years. And one of the things in his retirement that he saw that he just got emotional over was the flag-folding ceremony. Maybe you've seen it. Um, for me, it's just a flag-folding ceremony. For him, it became, oh, it became a way for him to just kind of be a blessing to folks. He went home and wrote his own flag folding ceremony speech. And while the music's playing and while they're folding the flag, Mr. Rodriguez walks up and he gives this stirring speech about what, what the stars represent and what the blue represents, what the stripes represent, what the colors represent. And at the end, he closes with three things. This is all he says. This is all he says. Mr. Rodriguez, who is a Christian, he closes with these three things. God bless this flag. God bless these troops. And God bless the United States of America. That's a pretty cool closing, wouldn't you think? Okay. He's been asked to do it at funerals. And he, he, he just loves being a blessing. 
He's got to do it at retirement parties, like men, officers who, uh, who retire, and they'll do a flag-folding ceremony, and he gets up there and, and gives a speech. And he was asked to do this at a flag-folding ceremony, and then the colonel over the, uh, the Air Force base sent an email to him and said, you will not come to my base. And, and you got to realize, there was a man retiring, and he was inviting Mr. Rodriguez to speak. And the colonel heard he was going to say these three things about God. God bless this flag. God bless these troops. God bless the United States of America. And, and he reported, he, he emailed him and said, I do not want the name God mentioned on my Air Force base. If you think I'm kidding, uh, First Liberty, um, First Liberty uh, Institute put this video out. And I want you to show you the story and the actual video of them arresting him for saying the word God at an Air Force base. I knew that very early in life that uh, there was something incredibly special about this country. When I was a child, during baseball games, one of the most emotional parts of that was uh, the national anthem. And I always tried to hide my tears from my brothers because I knew that many men died for that freedom to be able to have a hot dog and, and watch a baseball game. And when you see that flag waving, it resonated in me. And I knew that I had to be there. I had to, to participate in this. So I knew that when I turned 18, I was going to join the military. Well, Oscar Rodriguez is a decorated 33-year Air Force veteran and a retiree now. And uh, he has a history of giving very stirring and moving flag-folding speeches at military events and civic events throughout the community. One of the individuals that uh, came up to me and shook my hands, he was going to retire. He says, Son Rodriguez, I've heard that speech on CDs. I, I heard it in person a long time ago. It would just be wonderful if you could do that for, for my family. And, and I looked at him and I said, absolutely. As a private citizen and an Air Force veteran, Oscar has the right under the First Amendment to engage in speech, including religious speech. To have my fellow family throw me out of the ceremony because of the mention of God is beyond me. When Master Sergeant Roberson's commanding officer found out that Oscar was going to be performing this flag folding speech that was going to mention the word God, he took steps to have Oscar banned from the ceremony. And when he found out that he didn't have the legal authority to ban Oscar, a private citizen, from this ceremony, he then had members of his command in uniform show up to remove Oscar. I stood up, went to my position, faced the audience, and this individual comes up to me and he says, you're not going to do this, are you? And I'm thinking, so what is he talking about? That I'm really going to do what? Mention God? Yeah, I'm really going to do that. As soon as I hear my cue, I start with my speech. And they grab me, and they pull me, they assault me, as the flag is open, because I dare to mention God. The tragic irony here is that flag-folding speech talks about the fact that the United States flag stands for freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of conscience. And it was those very words that resulted in Oscar being assaulted and forcibly dragged away by men wearing the uniform of the United States Air Force, men who are sworn to protect people like Oscar and their right to engage in that very speech. It is this one nation under God that we call with honor the United States of America. God bless our flag. God bless our troops. God bless America. Yeah, I, I want to show you that not to get you mad at people. I don't want you now going, well, my gosh, let's fire, let's fire the colonel. Time out. Hold on. Let's not start throwing stones. The, the, the battle's not against flesh and blood. And today's message isn't about making an enemy. Today's message is to help you realize that, that there's, there's a pretty amazing thing. Is maybe the third shocker today is there's such people as lawyers that are Christians that do it for free. They do. And in this case, First Liberty um, Institute takes these um, cases on and they help people do the right thing and operate in their freedoms. And, and they're representing 
uh, this, this gentleman. And, 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 and they're also representing this other case. I thought this was fascinating because you may think, well, it's, it's only in the military. It's only on the, the weird states, just the weird states. You live in a weird state. Yeah, you really do. But, but would you consider Alabama a weird state? Hmm, maybe so. But, but this, is a, this is a really interesting thing. And Alabama is kind of the, the buckle of the Bible Belt. And this, this FCA group, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, I mean, how, how innocent can you be than FCA? I mean, they have to keep it really, really mellow because they've got all these denominations that they have to, be hap- have to keep happy. You know what I'm saying? It's like the Baptists have to get along with the Assembly of God. The Assembly of God have to get along with the Catholics. And Catholics have to get along with the Methodists. And then there's FCA right in the middle. It's like, hey, guys, let's just be happy and love Jesus, okay? That's funny. I don't care who you are. And, 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 and so this, this is an incredible football team and Alabama had this incredible year, and God did an amazing thing in their fellowship of Christian athletes. So they did the one thing that the Bible tells them to do after their profession of faith to follow Jesus. They want to be baptized. It's not just one, but it's just all these kids. And, and think about something so cool in your high school years to where one kid says, I want to be baptized. And then you think about it, and, and all of your friends want to get baptized together, and we'll never forget it as long as we live. What a cool high school experience. So they went and got a horse trough. I like these guys already. Okay? And they go to the football field, which they have the FCA on, and some of the cheerleaders want to get baptized too. And, and, and it's a really cool story. There's, there's about 15, 20 kids in the picture. And someone finds out that they want to get baptized on the football field, and they throw this huge stink. And so they cancel the, the baptism because it's on the football field. And First Liberty Institute steps up and says, whoa, 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 whoa. This is your school and you're the students, and you're not broadcasting your faith. This is a decision you're making that is the testimony of what God done, has done in your heart. You can be baptized on the football field at the right moment, at the right time, and all of a sudden you find out an amazing thing. And this is something I want you to realize and get. Get this. There are actually more for you than against you. If you're brave enough if you feel strongly about what God's put in your heart, you don't have to be rude and you don't have to be angry and you don't have to cause a scene and you don't have to be ugly. You can be gentle and you can be stern at the same time. There are more for you than against you. In fact, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Joshua 1 verse 5 is this story about someone, a group of people, the Israelites, going into the promised land. And I want you to listen very closely to what God says to them. And for somebody in the room, your faith is really, you you keep pulling it back, pulling it back when God's telling you to be bold, be strong. Look what he says. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And the first thing you have to know this, if God be for you, then who can be against you? Okay? Whether it's work or school, wherever it might be, you have freedoms in this country. But the next thing is very interesting, and this this speaks to everyone's faith here. He says this. He says something three times. If God says it once, that's a big deal. If God says it three times, we all need to pay attention. He says, be strong and courageous. What does he say? Be strong and courageous. Okay. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land. I swore to their ancestors to give them. And then he says this. Be strong and very courageous. Hmm. Be careful to obey all the laws my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And the very careful, the very courageous that he talks about to be strong and very courageous says, take my words and embrace them closely, for they are the words of truth. Put them on your hearts. Keep them on your lips. 
I wonder in a world full of darkness if there is people in this room willing to be strong and very courageous for the light and the truth of God to drive out the darkness. You're going to have to be strong. You're going to have to be courageous. And he says it a third time. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I'm going to wrap this up. And I just want to remind you of a few things. If you really want the calling of God, not to pastor, not to minister, but to be the children of God that you are, to bring truth in a, in a, in a false world, to bring light to a darkness, if you really are ready for your faith to grow, let me give you a few th- things, okay? Number one, we've got to start valuing what God values. That may not seem like a big deal, but honestly, there are some people who think that you can just kind of devalue everything because it really doesn't matter. And, and, you know, God's grace, is, it covers everything. Stop. When you value what God values, you watch the calling of God begin to stir up in you and the darkness begin to flee. Don't you dare complain about the darkness if you're not willing to be the light. Wow. Okay? Next thing is this. It's not just value what God values. And by the way, when I say value what God values, God values life. Okay? God values creation. Heck, he did it. Okay? God values the gospel message. Don't apologize for it. Don't back up from it. You may... They may curse you on this earth, and I said this a minute ago, but they'll celebrate you in heaven all because the gospel is the price that God paid so that people who didn't deserve freedom, who didn't deserve salvation, still found salvation because it was God's love. That's the message of the cross. Okay? So value what God values. You got to love what God loves. Does God love it? Uh, For everybody that loves to fight and you just love to bicker and you love to pick things apart and you're just the biggest critic and and it's just the gifting that God gave you, oh, shut up. You've got to start loving how God loves and you have to realize something for a minute. If, if, If our heart is toxic, is our God toxic? And the fact of the matter is, is that for us to really step into the calling that God has for us, we have to be healed of the falseness that can be so in us to step into the truth that God wants us to have in our mouth, in our head, in our heart, in our life. To walk in love because our God is love. Third thing is this. We got to learn how to protect what God's given us. A lot of people are predators, but how good of a protector are you? And if God gave it, Are you willing to stand up for it? So I'm going to wrap this up. The reason why this is such a big deal on this 4th of July weekend is because some of you, your faith needs to crack out of the shell it's always grown up in. You're going to grow so much more if you just get out of your uncomfortableness and get out, get out of your comfortableness and into your uncomfortableness. Okay, I want you to think about this. It's okay to pray. Okay? I, I, I don't like praying at football games. I mean, you may be totally different than me. This is just my personal thing. I always struggle being on the football team and then praying. And as we would circle up and pray, and I knew these guys, man, they didn't live for Jesus And coach would say, you pray. And so this guy who didn't even live for God would begin to pray. And he said, God, help us win. Which I thought was the dumbest prayer ever because you knew the other team was praying it too. You know what I'm saying? And so I never was big on just having this loud, obnoxious faith. Okay? 
but I loved when my pr friends would go off in the corner and they would pray and they would you would see him praying and you would see one guy slip out and walk over next to him and they put their hand on his shoulder and one by one the Spirit of God would just begin to draw people together but it just took one person it's okay to pray in whatever area you're in at work at school, it is okay to turn to a co-worker and let them know you're praying for them. It is okay to pray for your co-worker. At, at, just turn to them and say, would you like for me to pray for you? And don't be scared. Don't be scared. If your heart's going to be beating out your chest. The worst thing they can tell you is no, but my gosh, you've dated long enough to know that that's happened a lot in your life. No. No. That's, never mind. You've got to learn that your faith is stepping out. And if they don't want you to pray for them, they'll tell you no. But I have seen so many people that I've turned to and said, would you love for me to, I'd love to pray for you. And they go, absolutely. And right there, we hold hands, we put hands on the shoulders, or we just sit there like this. And we pray. You have the right to extend your faith by praying. You have the right to carry your Bible anywhere you want to go with it. And the fact is, is that um, we need to be more active in reading scripture and having dead time instead of getting on Facebook and Instagram and my gosh those stupid games we've got on our phones what if we begin to crack open our Bibles what if we begin to share Ted Weese used to do something so cool he used to walk into a room full of a bunch of cowboys and he'd go hey does anybody want to hear the scripture of the day and one cowboy would always say I do and he'd, he'd read it and it was on his on his little phone Bible I never forget and he'd read it to everybody and it was just this way of expressing encouragement and joy and, and love and God's got a plan for your life and how awesome is it it's okay guys for your faith to be seen it's okay to love the unlovable it's okay to love to be brave and courageous high school kids it's okay it's okay for you to rep represent Jesus wherever you're at. And it's not just me saying this. As Americans, the freedom of religion gives you the right to go tell this dark world about the light of Jesus. Can I pray? Father, we love you. We pray for today. And Jesus, we celebrate you. I don't know who needed to hear this tonight. I don't know what everyone's story is, but maybe they've been told over and over and over and over again, you can't, you can't, you can't do that, you can't do that, we don't do that, or we can't do that. And the fact is, is there's a different voice in our heart saying, yes, you can, yes, you can. Would you just trust me and do what I'm asking you to do? Yes, you can. And Father, today I pray that we would walk in love and we would walk in tenderness and we would walk in respect and we would walk in a humble, gentle way, but we would also walk in truth and we would walk in boldness and we would walk in the light for scripture tells us, your scripture, Lord, tells us that the darkness has to flee because the light is greater than the darkness. And we know this, that you, Jesus, are the light. Father, show us how to live. Show us what to do. Let us really examine what true treasure is in life, who true friends are in life, who needs the message in this life? And Lord, bless us. Use us. We pray for our nation. We pray for our state. We pray for our county in the surrounding counties all around us. Lord, we pray that you would bless America. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Cowboy Junction, it's time for us to love God, love people, and have no limits in our life. If you're here today and you just need someone to pray with you, our prayer team is going to be over here, and they'd love to pray for you. 
Don't forget the last envelopes we've got for the fundraising. You guys have a great week in the Lord. See you later.